Hi, I'm Tim Coyle, your instructor for today's lesson from Top Gun Hardware Academy. Visit us online at topgunhardware.com to see how our online training portal can help increase your skills as a hardware and software engineer. Today's pilot briefing is going to discuss microstrip trace impedance. Let's get started. There are three common types of microstrip traces, surface, coated, and embedded. So the image below is showing a surface microstrip. This means that the copper trace is exposed to the air. And normally your microstrip traces are found on the top and bottom layers of a PCB. Now coated is when the microstrip trace is coated with a solder mask. So instead of this just being air, there'd be a thin layer of solder mask that would be covering the trace, and this can change the impedance. Finally, there's something called an embedded microstrip. So what that means, instead of having this exposed to air, you would put another dielectric constant on top of this, or you would embed this trace in that dielectric layer that would have a dielectric constant, and that would change the trace impedance as well. So over here on the right, I have a formula which calculates the impedance of a microstrip trace. And you can see that this formula is valid over a certain range of values uh, based on the geometry of the microstrip trace. And as I've discussed in other videos, this is an equation that usually comes from fitted data. So while it's accurate to use in your pre-planning stack up uh, design when you're trying to design a controlled impedance, you should really use a field solver at the end of the day to calculate the final impedance. This is our W solver tool, which you get for free when you subscribe to Top Gun Hardware Academy, either through the monthly subscription or the yearly subscription. You can also purchase this as a direct download. So this screen I'm showing is for microstrip. And what you see here in this part of the screen is the impedance calculations being used to calculate the impedance and the propagation delay at the bottom. So you can use these sliders to move around and change say your trace width or your dielectric height or you can change a dielectric constant and see what that does to your characteristic impedance. Now again this is using the impedance equations so it's not as accurate as using a field solver but you can quickly change variables to see how it's going to affect your microstrip trace impedance. So if I set this back to 50 you can see based on these parameters of this stack up of a 5 mil 5 mils wide trace width um, and a dielectric height of 3.2 mils. So this is essentially the thickness of your FR4 laminate material using one using half ounce copper and a dielectric constant of this FR4 material 4 we get 50 ohm 50.2 ohms which is uh, our desired target impedance we're close enough to 50 ohms. Now if we go up the parameter sweep for the trace width what I'll do is I'll sweep this from 3 mils to 20 mils by a 1 mil step. And again, this is going to use the impedance equations to quickly calculate what the impedance would be across this range. And I'll drag this into the view. And so you can see here, as I enlarge this, uh, as the impedance, as the trace width, as the trace width goes from three up to 19 mils, you can see that your impedance goes down. So what you can see here is as your trace width increases for microstrip, your impedance goes down. So you can see here in this example, based on all the other constants being set, at five mils wide, we get a 50 ohm trace impedance. Now, if you wanted to do say 60 ohms, you can see that you'd have to go down to uh, you know, three or three and a half mil trace width, which starts to get to be a finer pitch, which might cost you more money. Um, and then there's other considerations beyond impedance when it comes to signal integrity in terms of loss. And there's also some fabrication issues in terms of uh, thermal management. So there's other things to trade off here. But when you look at strictly just the impedance, you can see how this tool and these equations can be quickly used to determine how you can modify your PCB stack up design to get the desired impedance that you want. So the trace width for microstrip is one of the big levers that you can pull to change the impedance. Now the other one that you can change is the dielectric height or the thickness of your laminate. Now remember, you know, these laminate thicknesses normally come in, in, in sort of ranges from your PCB fab vendor. So depending on who you're using and how much you're paying, you might not be able to get exactly what you want. But again, if we sweep this, I'll use the same sweep from 3 to 20. And then we'll uh, 
we'll get a new range here, a new impedance range. And we'll drag this into the into the view here again. Um, again, so you can see here that you get the opposite effect actually from the trace width is as you increase the distance of your PCB trace from your ground plane, your impedance goes up. So again, here we're at the bottom. If we're looking at, at 50 ohms, you know we want to have a rather uh, small uh, laminate thickness of three to four mils. But if we needed to say do 75 ohms, we could go up to six mils. So again, you can see here that by balancing the trace width and the trace uh, dielect and the dielectric height, these are the two big levers that you can change to see how your impedance um, values vary. And the last thing I'll do is show you what happens to the dielectric constant. So for FR4, the dielectric constant is around four. It can vary you know, between say three and a half and, and four and a half. So it's not a huge range. Um, so what I'm doing here is I'm gonna sweep from three and a half to four and a half um, by 0.1. And again, I'll bring this into, into view here. This is your dielectric constant V sub R. So you can see that between three and a half and four and a half, your impedance changes by about uh, three to four ohms, um, you know, from 52 down to 48. So the dielectric constant, so you might be expecting four, and then you might get 4.2. Um, so it's not going to be a huge difference, um, but it will put you in that range of a plus or minus 10% type of situation. So you can look at things like this and see, you know, how can you uh, choose your dielectric value that get you the impedance that you want. But in reality, it's more about kind of back calculating this based on what you measure or what your PCB uh, fabrication vendor gives you for the dielectric value. So that's just quickly how you can use these calculations to figure out what the impedance of a microstrip trace is. And again, finally, you should always use a field solver. So in WSolver, um, we have a link to an open source 2D field solver um, where you can uh, generate and run an actual 2D field simulation to calculate um, a lossless LC model and then view the result. And then if we load this, um, this will show us what our impedance is. So you can see based on, based on these parameters, we calculated to be 50 ohms, but actually, uh, the field solver gives us 54 ohms. So again, the difference between the calculations and the impedance field solver, you know, can be a couple ohms. And so at the end of the day, when you do final production or final release, um, you really want to use a field solver to really dial in your values and make sure that you're using the most accurate values.